As a dynamic young professional, today's guest is involved with several public and private sector and community-based organizations. He serves as a mentor and is actively involved in supporting programs geared at developing well-rounded and civic-minded young people and citizens. He has received commendations from various local organizations in recognition of his outstanding contribution to the development of young people and his invaluable service to and support of organizations focused on youth development. He is an active annual participant in the Week of the Young Child and Men's Read program in the U.S. Virgin Islands. Based on his love for writing and promoting literacy, our guest is a published author of three children's books, When I Grow Up, Where I Live, and Health and Safety for You and Me, all of which were featured in the U.S. Virgin Islands Governor's Summer Reading Challenge 2017, 2018, and 2019. His manuscripts are in homes and libraries in the U.S. Virgin Islands, British Virgin Islands, St. Kitts and Nevis, South Africa, and Peru, just to name a few. Birth in St. Kitts, raised in Tortola BVI, and now leaving a lasting legacy in the USVI is renowned author Rick S. Grant, who just happens to be my big brother. Viewers, thank you for joining me for this very special interview with author Rick S. S. Grant, a.k.a. Big Brother. Great news coming out of this amazing work after a word from our sponsors. You're watching Tweet for Media. Is business slow? Cash flow down? Hosting an upcoming event? We can help. Advertise with 284 Media and take your business or event to the next level by enhancing your present marketing and messaging strategies. Allow our team of experts to create a personalized ad that sets your business apart from all the rest. This could be your business or event. So, what are you waiting for? Contact our marketing team at 284 Media at cctbvi.com. Advertising with us works. Father Jesus, that line you long like church service. Hmm. Alright, you can try the rest of it then. Next customer in line, please. Wait, hold on a second. Yes, Sonny Boy, come, yes, Sonny. Good morning. Good morning, Sonny Boy, over there. You must have cut fun to people. It's okay, it's okay, I'll take care of it. What? No, no man, protect your How may I assist you? Yes, yes. <laughs> you want a top of Eh? You want a top of Eh? Join the prepaid party with CCT and enjoy more affordable data plans, more top-up promotions, more savings with Hero Bundles, and more value for your money each and every Tuesday with Top-Up Turn-Up Tuesday. Visit a CCT store today or anywhere CCT top-up is sold and top-up your phone. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, you want top-up or what? Eh? Rick S.S. Grant. AKA Big Brother. Welcome yes, to Detroit sir. for Media. How are Thank you? Thank you. I am good. How are you? Good. Thank you for making the journey over to the BVA um, for this very special interview. Now, three children's books. Before we get into the books, tell me about what introduced you to writing, first of all. I don't think you know this, um, okay. but when I was in Aldous Catholic Primary School, uh, Miss Fancy Tat Huggins was my um, teacher. I think it was at class three. And at that time, we had like a annual display or showcase in the cultural center um, with pieces and like artwork and mm -hmm. stuff that you did in school and that year I wrote a poem and I can remember it was on a white manila board um, and it was about Sabrina because at the time mommy was having you <laughs> and I didn't know <laughs> it was you <laughs> Um, but so I wrote, you wanted a sister. I wanted a sister. Oh, sucks to and be I, you. It, yeah, it sucks <laughs> to be me. Um, and I wrote this poem about Sabrina, mm -hmm. my sister. I remember it distinctly. I could see my drawing of her. Um, and that was truly my introduction um, into writing and okay. being creative. So I really want to shout out uh, Miss Vancy Tat Huggins and the whole um, Striders at the Scarlet Primary School for what they did back then that really introduced me um, into writing. I didn't get the sister mm -hmm. I wanted. Obviously, yeah. Um, but some years after now we got some books, so I think it's an equal trade-off. Good, good. Well, thanks for sharing that story. When I Grew Up, Where I Live, and Health and Safety. Now, When I Grew Up is a poetic and colorful book. It speaks to the dreamer in all of us and serves as a reminder that when searching for the best job in the world, the heart is the first place where we should look. Now, when I grew up, how did you incorporate your own desires and, and beliefs as it pertains to careers into this writing so that young persons could know, uh, dream to be anything? 
So Ms. Bansi Tahuggins again, um, I met with her, I think like it was two years ago when I had just launched a book, mm -hmm. and she said that she remembered me writing a similar script for school about careers. Okay. So I didn't even know I was preparing myself um, for a book like this way back when. And so this book came out of inspiration. I was home one day just getting ready to go out and it hit me when I grew up. So it was the concept was not necessarily to do the basic or average careers, mm -hmm. but really encouraging children in the wider scope of everything in the world is a possible career. And really and truly that's where this came from. And this from. is this one, let's see. This is the first one right, when, when I, I grew up. up. All right, yes, cool. yes, yes. Now, where I live, where do you live? In a cold place or a hot place? In a house, an apartment, maybe in a tent? Read and discover some of the many places that people and animals love to call home. Tell me about this concept. Again, so these first two were written literally the same night, okay. within an hour. And I was just flowing, my juices were flowing, and it just talks about, as you said, where animals live, where people live, I live in an apartment, where does a mold hill live, where do mm -hmm. ants live? So it's really just exposing children to the various habitats in the world, and that's Did you it. intend on releasing the books as a series, or did it just happen? It literally just happened. Um, every year because I'd already written the first two, okay. which was um, these two. So it really just happened. It just so happened that I did the first one, the process was pretty simple. And then I was like, okay, well, I have another one, did it again, and now we're three years in. Nice. So this is Where I Live? Where I Live, yes. Okay, cool. And then Health and Safety for You and Me, this colorful rhyming book reminds us of the little things we can do to help to be safe um, and healthy throughout the day. Tell us about this one. I was actually in DC. Um, I visited the African American Museum um, okay. maybe like two years ago. And I was sitting outside and there were some children playing in the pond. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if it's the godfather in me just went into this, that's not safe. Mm -hmm. And I pulled my phone and I just started to think about the stuff that we do or we did as children that are really not safe. Like we probably ran with a pencil, mm -hmm. and that's where health and safety for you and me came Great. into play. All right. um, this is this one. So, yeah. All right. Now, a uh, little bit of a personal question. Sure. Uh, no kids of your own. No, I don't. Uh, you have a multiple godchildren. A number of them. Okay. <laughs> a number of them. As a writer, why not a memoir? Why not a romantic novel? Why not? Um, you know, get into news and writing uh, political analysis, why children's books? What, what allows you or gives you the insight to be able to write for children? So I, before I left um, the BVI for college, I was a teacher at First Impressions. Okay. Um, and I think that, and I always wanted to be a teacher, but truth be told, I honor teachers, I love y'all, um, but we don't make enough. That's true. <laughs> um, so I kind of got distracted because like, I eh, know I have some big dreams that I need money yeah, to fund. Very ambitious. Very ambitious dreams. Um, so that was really the goal of it because I was in that environment and being able to encourage children. Um, and even now when I see the children that I taught at First Impressions, like, oh, I remember when you were five and six. Um, so that's really where that came from, really giving them manuscripts that they could see themselves in and they can be able to relate to and really be encouraged. Now, I write all the time in my job. I write, um, I have a bunch of poems that I wrote mm -hmm. um, when I was in college. Um, so writing comes easy for me, okay. um, but right now children's books are just flowing and I'm really going with it. Awesome. So uh, the Governor's Summer Reading Challenge, yes. you participated in the 2017, 2018, and 2019 uh, USBI Governor's Summer Reading Challenge. Yes. Tell me about that program. So the Governor's Summer Reading Challenge in the U.S. Virgin Islands is one where the idea is that between the summer, you kind of want the children to stay engaged, mm -hmm. so you don't want them to fall off. So we created, I think we're in like our 12th year, we created this um, platform where we give children books and they get to read and do like a book report. And mm -hmm. I remember doing book reports in the BVI. Of course. So it's a very similar idea. So it really keeps them engaged and it's just to keep the mind going and going. And every year we put a call out um, for authors um, in the Virgin Islands to just submit their manuscripts. Um, the governor's office and the uh, Department of Education comes together, just kind of decide what the um, theme would be for the next year. Uh, we pick like six of them and they range from, I think it's age six mm -hmm. to I think 12. Um, so everybody has an aspect of the book. We encourage them to read five or more books. Mm -hmm. We provide six, but they can read as many books as they want just to stay engaged. And that's really, it's really, really a good program. Okay. Um, really, and I really enjoy being a part of it. Um, I must say, from the time I started in 2017, you wouldn't imagine how many people have books sitting at home. And seeing me, a young professional, being able to publish, it has truly inspired them good. to want to write and even pull that 
book off, the dust it off, and submit it. So it's been a really rewarding experience for me. Wonderful. Now, one of the things that I really appreciate about all three of your books, I must say, is that when you go through the pages and you turn the pages, a lot of the characters look like us, look yes. like people we interact with yes. in, and, and aren't involved with. Tell me about your, your mission to make sure that uh, when reading, children see relatable faces. I remember, I think it was last year when I was here, um, a young girl got um, one of the, the first books and she was excited because, and she said, I can see myself in the book. Mm. And it hit me at that moment, this is really important. Yeah. I didn't recognize how important it was until hearing her, six, seven, eight, be able to see herself. And that for me is one of the greatest moments that I've had just in this whole process of being an author. Being able to see children see themselves. Though I didn't realize how important that was, mm -hmm. I realize now it is very important. So everything I do going forward, we're going to see ourselves in the books. Great stuff. Your process, uh, the, the process is quite different for many persons. My writing process is totally different. What, what does your process look like? So my phone is my biggest um, asset. So Great. I drive around and a thought comes to me and I literally so have to pull over. Um, no, I have to literally pull over okay, <laughs> and I have to get it out of my head. I mm -hmm. get it there. And then by the time I get home, I go back to it. Um, and it's a good intense like 48 hours of just revising it and getting it out of my system. Okay. And then once I get it out, I transfer it to the computer and then I kind of start to format it. So I write on inspiration. Funny enough, most of my inspiration comes around water. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll be washing dishes, I'll be taking a shower, something with water and I, it just hits me. And I literally have to stop whatever I'm doing okay. and get it out and get it in my phone. So your process is thing. quite different from mine perhaps. You don't necessarily maybe just put, start and maybe put something on for a really long time and then pick it back up no. again once mm -hmm. you start? Once I start, it goes. Okay. Yeah, it flows. Well, you traveled to a number of uh, countries yes. recently, uh, South Africa, Peru, of course, St. Kitts and Nevis, where you were uh, born, yes. and then also recently Toto and, of course, St. Thomas. Tell me about those mission trips and what you were able to accomplish in each of those uh, countries. So this started because the University of Virgin, Virgin Islands has a um, UVA to passport to the world program. So every year we travel for like two weeks and inter, in, in, interact with the culture and the people there. And so every, every year we go, we're supposed to bring something from our culture. Okay. And that first year we went to South Africa and I took my first book, um, When I Grew Up. And that was a really awesome experience to be able to go into a community and sit with children and read mm -hmm. and then have the book translated into their native tongue and then leave copies with them. Um, so every year I go on this trip now, I'm taking each of the books to just leave. When I went to Peru, I did the same thing. We actually sat with a family, um, read the book and just be able to leave a piece of knowledge wherever I go. So it's been a really, really awesome experience. And every time I travel, whether it's St. Kitts or to the USVI mm -hmm. or BVI, and I must admit the BVI has been very supportive. Um, okay. I was here a couple of weeks ago for yes. the Reading is Fun Week, yes. which was an awesome experience because I grew up on Reading is Fun Week. Mm -hmm. So now to be back as a author and be able to share, and again, the children came and they had their money and they were just going through and they were picking the books. And it was interesting to see them pick which book they wanted to pick. Mm -hmm. um, so I realized that colors and covers really speak to children. Um, so I really want to thank the BVA for their reception. All the teachers at Artist Catholic Primary School have been really supportive and all the other schools. What are you most proud of when you, obviously this is your third piece of writing, we don't know where, what's next for you, we'll find that out later, mm -hmm. but what are you most proud of at present uh, based on your contributions to literacy in the Virgin Islands? I am most proud of the fact that I, obviously I have um, the manuscripts, but I'm most proud of when others see it and they think too that they can do it when they get inspired. So I, I live off of inspiring others. So once okay. I can inspire one person to be like, you know what, I have a book at home. And I'm like, listen, it's really simple. Call me and we could go through the process. So that is really um, the happiest or the most um, rewarding experience for me, seeing others realize that they too can do it. And in seeing others believe that they can do it, there are some who may see it and they're still apprehensive, still mm -hmm. scared, still um, no, I can't put my work out like that. People are going to judge me. People are going to be um, uh, very critical. Mm -hmm. What encouragement would you give to those young persons or adults who really want to aspire and do great things, whether it be in literacy or other aspects, but they're really just scared? People are going to judge you regardless, Facts. whether you do good or bad. So for me, um, do good and have them judge you on the good, because at least you did it. 
at least you actually tried. You might have come across some hurdles or even failed, but you tried. And then once you tried and you realize, I actually did it. And I always tell people, it's not about the money, because you really don't make money from being an author, but being able to leave a manuscript in a home. And I get pictures all the time of parents that read the books to their children, oh my God, parents or other people. I got a picture from a young lady recently in St. Kitts through a friend of mine um, mm -hmm. when I gave the book here at the reading, um, reading is fun week. And it was so funny that she sent the picture to a friend of mine that sent it to me and the child was really encouraged. This is like his third book. So he's waiting for the rest of them. Okay. Um, I have classmates in the States that every year their children ask, so when's the next book? What's the next book? I'm like, oh, okay. So I go back to the drawing board mm -hmm. because people are literally encouraged and looking forward to more from me. So yeah. good stuff. Who are some of the people that you worked on with these books when it comes to not only the publishers, but the uh, exciting graphics? So for the first and last one, we okay. did use um, Annabelle. Um, she is a um, illustrator in Cuba. And then for the second one, your classmate, Gali, um, nice. from Indonesia. Um, when I was looking for um, illustrators for that one, I reached out to you, of course, and he was really, really helpful. Um, all the paintings or pictures in that book are literally hand-drawn and hand-painted. Um, so really a good collaboration of really educated and um, experienced um, persons around the world. Good. What's next for you as it pertains to writing? So after the hurricanes, I actually wrote a book and it's called When the Storm Winds Blow. Um, so that's going to be my, my next project for next year. And it really encourages children as to how we prepare for hurricanes. Okay. And I know we went through Alma and Maria, and we're gonna have a lot more of these things coming. So breaking it down, and it's really as simple as we pull our dogs in, we get food, we hunker down, we close the windows, and it was it's the same rhyming pattern. Mm -hmm. And that came, funny enough, while I was preparing for Alma and Maria in wow. St. Croix. I was washing dishes, and the wind was howling, and it came. You when wash this... a lot of dishes. It's funny <laughs> that you wash a lot of dishes. Cause because up, I didn't, didn't like to wash them when we were yeah, children. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, Whatever. Cool. <laughs> Interesting. All right, cool. Uh, well, we wish you all the best in that endeavor. Thank you so uh, much. How can persons get in contact with you who may want uh, to get a copy of the book or to have you perhaps visit the school. I know after our interview, you're going to be going up to the Enid Adams Primary yes. School to do a reading with them. So how can persons get in contact with you? So I do have a website, and it's www.ricksgrant.com. So it's just my full name, ricksgrant.com. Okay. And there you see my bio. There's a tab for sales. You can submit a uh, ticket to me via email. At my email, ricksgrant at hotmail.com. Um, this season, if you want the books to your children for Christmas, mm -hmm. go ahead and shoot me an email. I'll autograph them, put their names in it, and I'll get them out to you within a couple of days, and you'll have them packaged and ready. So, good stuff. We're quite proud of you. Thank you, sir. All right, let's have some more fun. Okay. I'm going to ask you some <laughs> questions. As a matter of fact, before we go there, can you do me a favor and sure. read an excerpt from one of your books, whichever your choice is? I'm going to read the most recent one, Health okay. and Safety for You and Me. Before you start something new, let's start over. <laughs> Practice health and safety rules each and every day. Before you start something new, ask an adult if it's okay. Doing this will help you learn and have fun in every way. Listen closely to parents and teachers and always do as they say, like when to play with your toys and when to put them away. Do not run with sharp objects, since you can fall and get hurt. Only food goes in your mouth, not pencils, games, or dirt. Keep away from the stove, electric outlets, and wires. These are some ways that you can help to prevent fires. To eat fruits and vegetables is an important rule. Drink lots of water to help your body stay cool. And this is just an excerpt from Health, Health and, safety and Safety for, for you. you and Me. Good stuff. Yes. So I'm going to ask you a few questions. Okay. And you are going to give me the first response that comes to your head. Okay. You don't have any time to think and ponder. Just oh, Lord. come straight up with <laughs> it. If you could take one person from VI history to lunch, who would it be? Yes or yes, somebody who's not alive. To lunch? Yeah. Um, it would be VI, Totola or the U.S. Virgin Islands. I, um, interestingly enough, would want to take um, the Honorable Ralph T. O'Neill really? um, yeah. to lunch, yes. Um, I grew up um, around Mrs. O'Neill and her husband, um, God rest his soul, and my condolences to the family and the entire BVI. So I would have wanted to have, and I, I, we had opportunities mm -hmm. there for Christmas mm -hmm. and stuff, but I would have wanted to just sit down and have lunch and get into his head and see 
um, his whole process. The same way I had a process to write, okay. what was his process um, to life? All right. Something you wish you were better at? Math. Math. Okay, <laughs> cool. Uh, who or what never fails to make you laugh? Who or what never fails... I have a group of amazing friends. Okay. Um, and they... Whether I'm good or bad, um, they they make they never cease to make me laugh. So shout out to all my friends in the BVI and the USVI and in the world. Okay, what food can you eat every day? What food can oh, oxtail, bacon, or steak? Hmm. That's a lot. <laughs> okay. Um, guilty pleasure. Um, the cookies. Um, they come in the blue and goal um, thing that has the sugar on it. Bimbo biscuits. Actually, Super 2 biscuits. Super 2 biscuits. That's okay. my guilty pleasure, okay. Super 2 biscuits. Cool. Biggest risk you ever took? Biggest risk I ever took? Um, life is a risk. Mm -hmm. Every single day um, I take risk um, to be better. Um, so life is the biggest risk that I'm taking. Okay. Uh, what's something people get wrong about you? Perhaps the biggest misconception. You. That we're the same person. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, we're not the same person. Thank you so much for Thank stopping Thank you so much. By. Appreciate it. Thank All you, guys. When you need to stay connected with friends and families at home or abroad, the best choice for you is Freedom. CCT Freedom. With the lowest rates in the market, our Freedom plan gives you unlimited calls and texting. Plus, our Freedom One package includes 10 gigabits of super fast unlimited LTE data and unlimited calls to the BVI, USA, USVI, Canada, Puerto Rico, and the UK lines. Why pay for overages when you can enjoy CCT Freedom? Stop by at one of our stores today and speak with one of our representatives to find out more about our CCT Freedom packages.